What's up, you two? Capital G here, checking out a brand new amazing fusion monster that just got revealed. This is coming out of the new booster set, Soul Fusion, and obviously it makes a whole lot of sense to uh, kind of crank up the fusion support when you have the word fusion in the name of the booster set. So I expect there to be a whole lot of new fusion cards, not just monsters, but also maybe some fusion spells as well. This is actually fusion support for Thunder as a type, which is excellent. I was talking about on my live stream, I think like maybe a week and a half ago that I kind of felt like Thunder was just really misused as a type and it was really underused if you look at Yu-Gi-Oh's history Thunder is like super old you got Thunder cards going all the way back to like Metal Raiders but honestly outside of Battery Man and the Thunder family Konami hasn't done a ton with Thunder there's been a couple of monsters here and there like Thunder King Ryo that have shaken up the meta but for the most part not really a lot of impact over the you know 15 or so years of the TC G. Anyways, let's go ahead and break down the brand new monster. This is Thunder Dragon, the Super Electro Dragon, or I guess it could be, the, uh, excuse me, Super Bolt Thunder Dragon. I actually think both of those names sound pretty cool. So either way, I think I'm fine with it. It's a level 8 Dark Thunder monster. Uh, fusion, obviously. 2,600 attack and 2,400 defense. So it's not quite as powerful as the old school, you know, Thunder Dragon fusion monster, which was like Twin Thunder Dragon. It was 2,800 attack, if I'm not mistaken, and it required two Thunder Dragons. But no one ever used that crap because I believe it was vanilla and it didn't have like any effect or anything like that. This guy has an amazing, well, this guy has a couple of amazing effects the materials are thunder dragon plus one thunder monster so it's actually easier to summon than the old school twin thunder dragon because now you can use kind of any thunder monster but the actual summoning conditions are not just fusion summoning which i think really makes this card it says must be either fusion summoned or special summoned by attributing one non-fusion thunder effect monster during the turn that a thunder monster's effect was activated in the hand in which case you do not use polymerization that is absolutely spectacular obviously that means that you can simply discard something like thunder dragon from your hand you can get another copy from your deck and then boom any thunder monster that you have on your field that is an effect monster as long as it's not a fusion you can distribute that monster and boom shakalaka you're going to get a brand new fusion monster on field i think that that's that that's definitely worth it especially considering that there are a lot of archetypes these small thunder archetypes like um the thunder family would probably be like the best example where the monsters don't really do a lot solo when they're on the field you usually have to combine it with another monster so if i could trade in a pot thunder to get this card out like absolutely i'll take that and it's just an easy way to get this guy on board we've got two effects both of them are fantastic the first effect is your opponent cannot add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them so it goes without saying that effect is absolutely fantastic stopping your opponent from being able to search is just huge in Yu-Gi-Oh! It obviously is kind of like a built-in Thunder King Ryo and or mistake. I feel like this card was completely, well at least this effect was completely inspired by Ryo because Ryo is a Thunder Monster as well, but it's actually even better than Ryo or Mistake because it's a one-sided kind of mistake where only your opponent can't use their searching abilities. So you can still activate your terraformings, your pot of duality. If you're playing, you know, the Thunder family where I think this card is fantastic and you summon your bro hunter, you can still actually search from that card. It's just your opponent who's getting locked out and then you got to think about this right against a deck like trickstar this effect could just beat them solo i mean seriously trickstar they play cards like candina and uh, light stage and uh, terraforming like if they can't activate any of those searches then have fun trying to deal with a 2600 beater when you can't search out that caribbean or you can't get to your cards and you can't really establish the board that you want anyways effect number two if this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect you can banish one thunder monster from your graveyard instead fantastic like to me this effect takes this card from great to amazing i think that everything about this card was already good but now you're talking about getting built-in protection and it's just smart card design because if you're going to tribute a thunder monster to summon this then obviously you're going to have at least one layer of protection you're going to have one use immediately when you put this card on the board but in addition to that if you happen to use thunder dragon which i probably think is the most common way that people are going to have you know these thunder effects activating in the hand then that's another card that can be in your grave 
graveyard as well in fact you can use thunder dragon because it's not a hard once per turn you can use it a couple of times in a turn and you can get like three thunder monsters and now your opponent's looking at a one-sided thunder king ryo that also has great stats and it can't be destroyed by battle or card effect you know three times during that turn because this protection effect is not a hard once per turn overall i think that this is a fantastic card in general i think that it is excellent for any thunder deck i mean yeah i don't think that uh incorporating thunder dragons will be as seamless for something like battery man as it would be for a deck like uh, the thunder family because the thunder family is more naturally like it's more naturally a stun deck and they probably are going to run a card like mistake anyways maybe even thunder king ryo this is kind of like additional stun for you to kind of throw at your opponent battery man is more of like an otk fast deck you're trying to just ko your opponent so it might not work splashing in thunder dragons in that the only thing that i think this card needs i think that this card is objectively like almost a perfect card for thunder the only thing it needs is more ways of basically being active or being able to activate thunder cards in the hand so that you can summon it easily because really there's only one good way that i can think of and that is the original thunder dragon there are some other thunder cards throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history that activate in the hand there's like mithra you know the the monarch card and obviously there's like thunder seahorse the problem is those cards don't let you special summon or they don't let you summon from the extra deck during the turn you activate those effects so you can never use those in conjunction but now i think the original thunder dragon is still pretty sufficient especially considering you you only have to search one copy so you can activate thunder dragon on your first turn if this card dies it gets kaiju or something like that that's fine just use your second thunder dragon you search summon another Another copy during your next turn and you still have that one thunder dragon in your hand so you're never actually going neg and it's just an excellent monster so you guys let me know what you think i kind of feel like konami should do this for some other underappreciated types maybe like sea serpent and fish and stuff like that whatever you guys think leave it in the comment section below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos